All right, we are on YouTube. Great, well, let's start. Um, good evening, everyone. I now call the April 6, 2000. Hi, everyone. Oh. <laughs> uh, I now call the April 6, 2021 meeting of the Lafayette General Plan Advisory Committee to order. This meeting is streaming live on the city's YouTube and is also accessible by Zoom webinar linked to log in on the city's calendar. We will do a roll call for those committee members in attendance. Staff, would you please read out the names and committee members, when you hear your name, please affirm your presence. Carol Singer. Namratha Castellanati. Here. Don Jenkins. Present. Dick Craig. Present. Matt Pease. Here. Beth Needle. Present. Jim Cervantes. Present. Mike Kim. Susie Kelly. Christine Rasmussen. Present. Chris Lee. Present. So we're missing Mike, Carol, and Susie. Correct. Okay. Um, I'm anticipating them, they'll probably join in the next few minutes. And and then I'll just also um, mention Anna Radinich. Oh yes, okay. All right. Present. And Susie, uh, Susie's joining the meeting now actually too. Good. And Susan Kendall. And Susan Kendall, of course. <laughs> Guest of honor. Yes. Okay, uh, moving on to the adoption of agenda. Would a committee member like to make a motion to adopt the agenda? So moved. Second. Okay, the agenda is adopted. Moving on to public comments. Uh, staff, is there anyone waiting to make a public comment? If you would like to make a public comment on an item that's not on the agenda, please use the raise your hand function at the bottom of your screen or press star nine uh, if you're calling in. I don't see any hands raised this time. Okay, public comment is closed. Uh, so we'll move on to housekeeping. Is Carol, has Carol joined us? No, she has not. She had mentioned that she may not be able to join tonight, so. Oh, okay. Um, okay, so uh, I know this is a, an important issue that we brought up last time. Um, Sarah, you have a thought about uh, talking about it without Carol or should we wait until she's available? Uh, I think it might be worthwhile to wait till until she's available. I don't know that it will be an issue at this meeting, so um, I think it's worthwhile to wait. Okay. All right, well, we'll move on to the commissioner activity reports. Uh, we're gonna allow about five minutes per item. And uh, there have been a few um, housing element re related meetings with committee members since we last convened. So the committee members who are um, going to be speaking about each sub item should provide a brief update uh, on their meeting. How did the meeting go? What were the key takeaways? And is there anything we need to consider as a group uh, moving forward? So our first uh, commissioner activity report is on the community organizations meeting that Beth Needle and I had, seems like a million years ago. Um, but uh, Beth, if you would like to uh, talk about that meeting, um, that would be great and I'll contribute uh, as well. Wow, 
it was a million years ago, so I'm trying to remember from oh, I'm the. Sorry. You know what? Didn't we I'm talk sorry. about it last time? We actually made a report last time, so sorry about that. I know that's okay. I was having to scroll back in my head. Thanks. <laughs> so uh, the next uh, commissioner activity meeting um, will be by uh, Jim Cervantes. And he'll be reporting on his neighborhood meeting with uh, the Release Valley uh, neighbors and others who joined the meeting. Jim, you want to give us a report? Sure thing. Uh, this only feels like a thousand years ago. Uh, yeah. <laughs> March, March 18th. Uh, honestly, I thought, well, I don't know exa the exact count of folks. I did look up later on to see the views. And I think we were like at 120 or something, give or take. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, you know, I thought that the, the video presentation was really effective. Again, kudos to staff for putting that together and Jonathan for, for, for narrating it. Um, and, um, you know, I thought the, the questions were wide ranging. Uh, I took notes on them. Um, and, um, you know, I think that people were pretty, it was a good, engaged, respectful discussion with folks. And um, I think maybe some of what we're gonna need to wanna coalesce all this stuff together to make sure that we've got what the big picture is on these sessions, but I, I felt pretty good about it afterwards. And Chris, I know that you were there and actually we had a guest appearance by our mayor, um, but uh, I thought it went well. Yes, that was, was that the meeting with the dramatic moment, uh, the woman that was speaking about the firehouse being closed. Right. Um, and Mayor Candell appeared and said, nope, it's open. And boy, you made her day and year. <laughs> yeah, that was really, really sweet. Wow. <laughs> Rare you get moments like that. <laughs> That's just great. Does anybody have any questions of, of Jim on his meeting? No? Okay, well, the stats say that uh, there were 135 registrants 46 attendees, and 21 of them um, gave survey responses. So that's pretty good. Yeah, great. All right. Uh, so Jim, you're up next on uh, Save Lafayette Commissioner Activity Report. Sure thing. Um, so one of my neighbors is active in Save Lafayette. So we, he organized a call uh, and I spoke to Paul Melmed, um, Michael Griffiths, Guy Atwood, and Colin Elliott, um, it was a good conversation. We were kind of, I think one thing I thought was interesting to talk a bit about the buffer. Um, and uh, the only unfortunate thing is the Zoom cut us off at like the 40 minute mark. Mm -hmm. um, and so we agreed we'd need to sort of pick it up again, probably the next week or so, just to sort of round it out. But uh, I thought it was a good helpful conversation. And um, you know, I think in the spirit of trying to make sure that we're listening to everyone in the community, I thought it was helpful because I talked to Inclusive Lafayette earlier. So I thought it was good, good balance. Okay. Does anybody have any questions for Jim on Safe Lafayette? No. Were there any takeaways, Jim? Um, you know what? I think we're kind of beginning to get more into the substantive stuff. I, I think the big one for me was... Um, we were talking a, a bit about the buffer and, um, you know, and that I think is something that we'll want to really try to get our, our hands around. I mean, the number's been floating there at sort of roughly this 50% mark, it's meaningful, just given the, the base number we're working off of the 2100. So um, I, I think that that to me was one key, key takeaway is like, okay, are there different ways of looking at that? You know, I'm sure staff, Dana have a perspective, but it's sort of like, okay, um, what is like the fair, reasonable, right approach to that? Is it really 50% of the base number or is it something s smaller or should it be larger? I don't know. I mean, but I think that's something we should really drill into at some point as we move, as we move further along here. Thank you. Uh, Don had a question. Well, I just uh, am wondering, uh, Jim, as, as you are uh, talking with Guy Atwood, uh, and I realize he's part of the Save Lafayette team, but he's not even a citizen of Lafayette. And I'm not sure what input uh, at this point non-Lafayette people are supposed to be having to what we're doing. 
Yeah, he's moved to Pleasant Hill, uh, but he has a really long history in the city. Yeah, I know that. I know that. I've been on these commissions with him before. Right. And, and yeah. So I, I, I felt the perspective was valuable. Um, and, you know, he was one of several. And um, so I kind of felt, you know, why not? I mean, he was on the chair of the prior GPAC as well. So I yeah, very comfortable with that. Yeah. Mayor Kandel? Hey, yeah, so real quickly is that we, um, I think we've chosen not to limit the input from just people in Lafayette. I, I think that has been something that we've seen in our meetings. Um, people do pipe in that don't live in Lafayette. And so it would be interesting if that is something we want to consider. Um, I'm not sure we could enforce it. Um, for us, especially for council and stuff like that, we, we can't, there's, it's public, it's public comment, you know, and then, and there's no, we can't even really ask for names or addresses. They are able to come on completely anonymous. Um, and that is for protection, which is good. Um, so I know that the comment is coming up that he doesn't live in Lafayette, but I know others have, have spoken at meetings that are not also from Lafayette. And so it's just something that I think we have to understand and, and, and you know, accept. Mm -hmm. It's hard, but it's it is. I think our reality. Mm -hmm. uh, well, my role on GPEC is the at-large member, and one of my constituencies are people who work in Lafayette but don't live in Lafayette. So we we've already made that exception for for this committee. I understand. And, and you say the city council has decided to. Kind of lift that restriction. That's by law. <laughs> we just, we, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so glad we're following that. <laughs> All right, very good. And uh, our next commissioner activity report is on the mission statement um, given by the subcommittee, Jim, uh, Namratha, and Matt. So. Uh, take it away, whatever order you guys want to go in. Um, I guess I'll, I'll kick it off. Um, we've been meeting every other week. And the last couple of weeks, we've been focused on coming up with a survey that we plan to send out to the community and, uh, and businesses in Lafayette that helps give us some feedback and some suggestions from people on what they would like to see go into our mission statement, uh, if indeed we revise it. Uh, Mayor Kandel has given us some input on it. Uh, Jim met with uh, Council Member Anduri. Uh, he also gave us some suggestions. Um, we just had a meeting just before this and we're very close to finalizing the draft, finalizing the survey, which we would send out both in Vista the daily or the weekly roundup and all of our social media platforms and our uh, website. Basically, it's got different sections in it. There's an explanation at the front end of what this is all about. Um, then we ask people to share kind of their top eight attributes. And we, we have a long list of different attributes, but things like great parks and trails, safe, family friendly, things such as that. Then what are their priorities for the community? Um, where should Lafayette put its resources and tax dollars? What areas of the city are most important to people? And then there's several sections where they can give us comments and just free form feedback. And then finally, we ask them for some demographic information, both uh, general areas where they live in Lafayette, uh, their age, how long they've uh, lived here, um, and whether they work or live in Lafayette. So we're hoping to, we got the final comments we think today, and um, uh, we'll have this redone. Um, and we should be able to send it out around the middle of, uh, of April. Uh, we're almost done with it. And then we'll run it for about six weeks. We'll also do a mail U.S. mail uh, postcard reminding people, getting them more aware of it. And so hopefully in um, late May, early June, we can analyze the results, share the feedback, 
and then start crafting the mission statement. So that's kind of the work stream that we've got going on. And if I could chime in, the idea is to have the, the there'll be a, Chris, you may be talking about this later, but in the, at the next council session, there's gonna be an update for, for council about what GPAC's doing. We thought we'll have a conversation about this sort of effort to, to re-examine the mission statement, value statement, and so on. The idea is that this redrafted version of the survey will be in the agenda package uh, for council members just to have a look at. Um, I think that the discussion there will be higher level, but we wanted to make sure that at least what we have in terms of this work product is out there. And uh, so the council could take a look at it too. That was, that's our thought. Great. Right. Amrata, would you like to I think talk about said the process? Um, the process, yeah, we've just been um, working on it, uh, soliciting opinions from various, um, from Mayor Kendall and council member and jury and between the three of us and also with um, Mr. Jamie Harris. And yeah, that's kind of been it so far. Just been kind of refining wordsmithing to make sure the survey is as unbiased and all encompassing as possible. And we hope we can publicize it adequately. So it is, everybody gets to look at it and take the survey and provide their input in this mission statement process. I was noticing on, and I'm sure we'll get to it later on the, um, the engagement HQ information that we all received that actually the written word seems to be the most popular form of communication. So I'm glad a postcard's going out, et cetera. So it looks like people do pay attention to that. Okay, uh, do the committee members have any questions for the subcommittee? Okay, thank you all for your work. Um, our next topic is uh, the City Council CEQA uh, Scenario Review Update by Mayor Candell. Hi, yeah, so we, um, it just some updates. The, we are, officially not having that um, review next Monday, April 12th. It has been put off until April 26th um, for, for various reasons. Um, but we will address it on April 26th and the EIR consultant is okay with us delaying for another two weeks. Um, so, you know, right now it sits at, you know, the, the council, you know, wants to be able to, you know, give a broad template to give to you guys to, to play with and the EIR consultant to study. And um, so I've been having meetings with um, uh, Greg and Diana Elrod, a couple of meetings, and also um, with Colin Elliott. He's um, been brought in. He actually, for his job, is a housing consultant and has dealt with many, many, many issues like this, you know, professionally as well as being a resident, which is, is so great. And he's a really nice guy as well. And so um, we've been going through and kind of refining and helping Greg and Diana create this thing that is gonna be presented on um, April 26th. And so hopefully it'll be um, worthwhile and, and helpful for all of you. <laughs> so anyway, so that's where that stands. So does anybody have any questions? Sounds great. Okay, thanks for the update. Mm -hmm. Okay, moving on to, oh, is Carol joined the meeting yet? She did ask me to present this one. Oh, that's correct. All right. Right, yeah. Um, yes, that's right. I saw that uh, late this afternoon. Me too. So, so, um, Right so does everybody have that survey? Did everybody get that email? So HCD is the Department of Housing and Community um, Development, HCD, has sent out a California statewide housing plan survey. And I, I don't have a chat, so I can't really put that link up, but maybe somebody can email that out to everybody. Um, I think you guys, okay, I think you guys did see it. Um, it, it is really broad, 
but they want everybody's input and it's supposed to be done by April 23rd. And so if we can get the message out for as many people to respond, that would be terrific. Um, it, it is broad in terms of they do have, you know, some specific where you rate things, but most of it's just writing in, you know, your opinions. And so it's pretty, it's pretty loose. And so you're able to put in pretty much whatever you want to answer these questions. And I encourage all of you to do it and, you know, honor, honor, answer it as best you can. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's on. So, uh, Sam, I, I, yeah. Should, should we share this beyond us with people in the community and the neighborhoods or is this just sure. This, Absolutely. This is Statewide. for everybody. Okay. Okay. Uh, so Anna, yeah, uh, Commissioner. Anna, yeah, thank you. Um, so I do remember seeing that email scrolling through right now. I can't find it. Do you remember if it came from the city? Like, was it part of like the, you know, roundup briefing or was it maybe from city staff? Do you happen, does anyone happen to remember? Sent I was email? sent to it and asked to send it to all you guys, right? So, maybe it, so came from you. it may have came, come from Joanne, because um, I got an email from them. But I think it just came this afternoon. Right, around four o'clock. Great. Okay, thanks. And if you didn't get it, then we need to send it on to all the commissioners as well. And, and just to get the word out, and I'll have Jeff blast it. All yeah. right, uh, Matt. There's a, you know, is there something behind this where HD, HCD is reconsidering or doing something different? Was there a reason why they did survey or is this their normal course of work? I don't know. Okay. I, I honestly don't know what, um, why they're doing this and why they're doing it now. Right. I don't know. Okay. I could try to find out if, if, if that's something interesting. I could try to find out if there's been any precedent for this or if this is something they've done before and what it looked like before, or if this is something just brand new and they just are trying it. Okay. I can try to find that out. Thank you. Hi, uh, to Craig, hi. Yeah, hi, <clears throat> yeah, I was gonna have pretty much the same question, but I guess, so it's not necessarily heading towards a reassessment of the whole arena process, or we just don't know that, or? Um, it looks more like, it doesn't, it, it talks about, current housing conditions and stuff. No, there has been absolutely no movement in terms of them reassessing the six cycle numbers. There are requests um, to perform an audit by the audit committee because HCD so far has said that they're not gonna reassess. And so the audit committee could do that as a part of an audit. Okay. That's the only thing that I've, I've seen in motion so far. Okay, and this is basically everybody in the state of California is okay. All right, yep. thanks. Mm -hmm. Anyone so else if you guys, have a question? If, if you don't have the link, let me know. And I, I'm going to tell Jeff to get it all out to everybody as well on his side. Uh, I'll also just put it in the chat as well here. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, right. like, uh, no more questions? For Mayor Kendall? Great, thank you very much. Okay, that wraps up our commissioner activity reports. Uh, just looking at the time, it's 25 after six. And um, our next uh, um, agenda item is a presentation by staff on the housing element, the community engagement review and our launch of public input, input phase. So staff, are you ready to make your presentation? Yes, we are. All right. Okay, everybody can see my screen? Yes. Thank you. Yes. So good um, evening. Oh, go ahead, John. No, Sorry. please, please, please. <laughs> uh, no, please, you go ahead. Okay, um, so one item for us tonight, it's in a uh, review of our engagement activities as we move from the inform stage to the public input stage. Next slide, please. Uh, we'll uh, reiter reiterate the public process and go over GPAC's responsibilities. 
We'll review our engagement efforts in the inform stage and summarize our key takeaways. We have um, a short video to show you uh, the virtual walking tour, and also we'll be launching the public input community engagement phase. Next slide. So this uh, graphic shows the flow of information from council to the public. So our elected council uh, directed staff to begin work on the general plan and the housing element, directed staff to form a general plan advisory committee, and GPAC has been working with staff to create a community engagement strategy, as well as directing staff to um, provide information about the housing element for um, the public's benefit. Next uh, slide. And for the public inputs phase, it's, it's kind of the opposite. So uh, the general plan and the housing element cannot be successful without in, input from the public. Um, so that's why, I why we have public at the top. And the public is all of our stakeholders, including property owners, renters, business owners, visitors to the city. Um, they will be um, providing input and feedback about the housing element, element to GPAC, who will take in all that information and form recommendations for, again, the council to ultimately, ultimately decide on. And all along the way, staff is here to assist. Next slide. So going in a bit about um, each uh, party, the public again is to participate in, in the update, to stay engaged, to collaborate with their neighbors, to encourage others to participate as well. GPAC will be seeking input from the public, and providing information to the public, taking in that information, synthesizing it and uh, forming recommendations. The Planning Commission and the City Council will be reviewing those draft recommendations, asking questions and making decisions and staff will be supporting again all along the way, facilitating meetings, um, creating content for the general plan and reporting out on those activities. Next slide. So the resources that we've had so far and we'll continue to update our planlafayette.org that's the city's uh, general plan website. Under the elements tab, we have a housing element a tab is, that is very flushed out at this point that has frequently asked questions, um, has a record of, of the meetings that we've had so far. In the get involved stage, we have uh, links to engagement HQ as well as um, contact information of how uh, the public can get in contact with GPAC and staff. And in the library, we have a collection of all of our digital resources, including the previous general plan, previous housing element, and information on uh, RENA and AB 2923, our downtown specific plan, residential design guidelines, um, downtown design guidelines, that's all in the library. And Engagement HQ, which is separate but still tied to planlafayette.org, just one quick click away. That's our collection of, and hub for all of our digital engagement activities. So GPAC is very familiar with Engagement HQ so far, and hopefully the public is starting to use it more and more. But that's where we've had our mapping activities, our surveys, forums, stories, and we had the ideas walls following all of our housing element info sessions. LoveLafayette.org is the city's website, the main website, and that'll be continued to be updated with our upcoming meetings, as well as providing opportunity to sign up for e-notifications, um, to stay involved in all things related to the general plan. And as always, staff is here as a resource. So if you ever have a question about process, about how to get involved, feel free to contact us. Next slide. Um, going, in, going from the um, inform stage to the input stage, uh, the inform stage, a big part of it was just trying to get the word out, just trying to get people um, aware that the city is going through an update of its general plan and its housing element. And we've had some success, uh, quite a bit of success in uh, different ways of doing that. So we've done direct mailings to all of our properties in the city, um, just over or about 13,000 households. We did direct mailings for the formation of GPAC as well as our housing uh, info sessions. We've had um, plenty of activity on planlafayette.org since September. We've had over 4,000 visitors, 11,000 page views. We have a continuously growing list of stakeholders in email list. Uh, we have about over a thousand views on YouTube for our, um, the content that we've created specifically for YouTube. So excluding the 
the recorded GPAC meetings, excluding the recorded housing element videos, just the videos about uh, the intro to the general plan and the intro to the housing element that's over a thousand views. We'll be publishing in the VISTA shortly and staff in the GPAC has already attended over 50 meetings since last February. So that's all of our GPAC meetings, council meetings, updates to the commissions, stakeholder interviews, housing and post sessions, that's already over 50 meetings. Next slide. Thank you, Jonathan. So um, as we kind of touched on earlier in the uh, com committee member reports, we had six uh, very well attended housing element 101 sessions. So it was six sessions packed into five weeks. Uh, there ended up being a total of 423 attendees out of over 800 registrants. Um, that's likely due to some folks registering, but for all of them, but not attending all of them. So our numbers might be skewed a little bit. And we did get over 140 survey responses. So after each session, attendees were um, provided a link to a survey to get some feedback about the, the session so we could better understand what's working, what's not. Um, and it was generally positive feedback and we'll get into that in a little more detail on the following slides. But just wanna draw out some of the other uh, topics of interest for future conversations. So there were a lot of commenters uh, seeking information on the impacts of new housing, um, on our infrastructural capacity, uh, zoning, what zoning we're required to do and where, uh, what current developments are under review or construction, how affordable housing fits into all this, as well as climate change. So uh, this, this this along with other survey result information was uh, posted on the city's website and sent to the GPAC. Um, but we saw that there, there's a small change in the more than one source um, for notification of the events. Um, there were actually 62 respondents who heard from more than one source. And um, we were curious in seeing how well the city's communications were working uh, and 100 people out of the 142 heard either through the city Facebook page, uh, direct mailing or the weekly roundup. And again, as we as was uh, spoken to earlier, the direct mailings were a very effective means by which um, to reach folks. Um, and again, there were some questions about uh, gauging how, how what attendees got out of the session. Uh, so I think the biggest the biggest uh, tell in how how effective the session was is that most folks went from a three, which was the middle of the scale to a four, which is on the upper end. Um, and I think it's also very encouraging that we got a 4.2 on folks willing to recommend this to a friend and a 4.3 that folks would attend in the future. So as we'll speak to later, there will be many more opportunities uh, for folks to get involved and um, just very encouraging to see that work. So thank you to all the GPAC members for your, your participation and attendance and uh, um, it was well worth the time. Um, so, and then of course we wanted to give an overview of Engagement HQ. So since mid-February when we launched the site, we've had just under 900 visitors, but only a hundred folks registering. Um, so it's, that's not a great registration rate. Um, but we are hoping to introduce more and more activities on there to help draw folks in and keep them coming back um, and interested in registering. And um, we do have a number of activities up on there currently, including the um, map shown at the right, where folks can drop pins to highlight things they love, the ideas walls that Jen Jonathan mentioned earlier, uh, a new forum where folks can have a conversation about what uh, they value about Lafayette, stories, a stories board to share um, their personal experiences with housing. And then of course a Q and A section where the public can uh, ask their questions and have them, the responses posted publicly. So Jonathan will now uh, reveal our walking tour. Yes, so just before we launch the public input phase, one of the last activities we have for the informed stage is the virtual walking tour. We tease that early on um, when we started talking about the housing element. So we created a, a video, it's about 10 minutes long, covering 11 stops in the city, talking about uh, different uh, housing sites, either existing or proposed. Um, and, and each one of those sites talks about a different aspect of the housing element, whether it's design, uh, neighborhood context, environmental review, potential impacts 
on the surrounding properties. So without further ado, I'll share my screen and uh, share audio. Again, it's about 10, mini 10 minutes. Um, it is a draft. We plan on making a few tweaks before it's published to the YouTube channel next week. Um, but we envision folks watch the video um, and then after or at the same time, they'd have a physical guide where they can follow those steps um, and recreate the video for themselves. So let's go for it. Hi hey everyone, we're going to go on a walking tour today in the downtown to continue our discussion on the housing element. Uh, we're going to do a couple of sites, talk about about 12 different sites, which will show different aspects of housing development, including density, height, public amenities, affordable housing units, uh, and some other items as relates to housing. of the BART bill, or what is also known as AB 2923, a law, law that was signed by the California governor in 2018, requiring all BART-owned parcels to be upzoned to a minimum of 75 dwelling units per acre and a minimum of five stories by July 1st, 2022. Rezoning BART for compliance with AB 2923 could account for approximately 825 units towards the city's regional housing needs allocation. Some things to consider are impacts to parking, traffic, and the parcel's location within a high fire hazard severity zone, and whether or not these potential impacts can be sufficiently mitigated. If these properties are not upzoned, then these units will need to be accommodated elsewhere in the city. Our next stop is Town Center in downtown. center apartments. Uh, this is three stories over a parking garage uh, and has been here for quite some time, although you might have missed it, uh, given that it's set back from Mount Tybo Boulevard and so the height is not as noticeable from, from the street. So housing is not just housing. There are uh, other amenities associated with developments. Uh, either proposed by the developer or required by the city. Uh, some examples of those are the play area for the children, outdoor living space, and public art, as you can see here. This is Town Center Phase 3, and it is a 69-unit condominium building. Uh, it is four stories over two stories of concrete podium parking. Mount Diablo Boulevard. It's a mixed-use development that was approved in 2001. So on the ground floor we have super cuts and some retail and then on the upper floors we have uh, two levels of residential. Huff. This is currently a commercial development but was recently approved in March of this year to be redeveloped into a 20-unit, uh, four-story apartment complex. By providing three below market rate units at moderate income levels, the project was eligible for unlimited waivers and one concession pursuant to the state density bonus law. Waivers and concessions are reductions in site development standards or modifications of zoning code requirements. As part of the approval, the city secured a creek trail easement in the rear of the property. This 
is 210 Lafayette Circle, a recently approved project in the downtown core. With the application submitted by the developer in 2017, careful consideration by the Design Review Commission, and entitlements from the Planning Commission approved in 2018, and construction having just begun in 2021, it is an example of the length of time the development process can take before units are produced. This parcel was listed as Site 7 in the 5th Cycle Housing Element Opportunity Sites list. The projected capacity was estimated at 10 units, taking into consideration environmental constraints, site improvements, and land use controls. The strict mathematical capacity based on the allowable density of 35 dwelling units per acre is 13 units. The final project was approved at 12 traditional units with one live-work unit, meaning it could be used as a commercial space as well as a dwelling unit. first two goals listed in the current housing element adopted in 2015 are to conserve and improve the existing housing supply to provide adequate, safe, and decent housing for all residents with emphasis on maintaining the semi-rural character of the city. And goal number two is to facilitate and encourage the development of diverse housing types and additional affordable housing units to accommodate the diversity of Lafayette citizens in terms of age and socioeconomic background. Here we are at 942 Dewing Avenue. So this project, a couple of things to note. Uh, one is that the there are five units on this parcel, uh, but it may not look so dense from the street given that the front edge of the building looks more like a cottage or more like a single family house uh, with, the, with the units closer to the rear. So there's a duplex, two flats, and then a cottage in the front. This definitely went through design review uh, as well as planning commission. So it did go through our city processes. Trees were an important aspect uh, as well as the colors and materials. This is in the MRA zoning district, so it's the Multiple Family Residential District A. Uh, and this is the only district in the city that currently uses M uh, FAR, which is floor area ratio. And that's one way to control the physical design of a building. Subdivision, so it's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit denser, small, single family development close to the downtown. So it's right off of Bigger Staff. Here we are at what's called six. It is uh, six condominium units located immediately adjacent to Trader Joe's on Mountain View Drive. So as you can see here, this is a three-story building. There's parking on the ground floor and then there's an additional parking space below grade. This allows for uh, more usable space above grade and also reduces the height uh, while still complying with the parking requirements. The project combined three parcels, including one containing the former Mexican restaurant, Celia's. This is a mixed-use project of 66 condominiums with 5,400 square feet of commercial uses, including a full-service restaurant. This was part of the Opportunity Site number 4 listed in the 5th Cycle Housing Element. And as you can see, the project is currently under construction in 2021. Each project is evaluated in accordance with the California Environmental Quality Act, or CEQA. Several topics are evaluated, such as aesthetics, biological resources, noise, air quality, and traffic. In this case, the increased traffic and location of the underground parking entrance created an impact, the mitigation of which will be installation of a traffic signal in this location. This is the Woodbury. This site contains 56 for sale condominiums with an approximate density of 23 dwelling units per acre. The building heights are 41 feet tall. All new development requires the payment of development impact fees. 
This is funding meant to mitigate the impacts to infrastructure caused by the increase in new residents. In addition to impact fees the developer may provide, or in certain circumstances, the city may require additional improvements. Here you can see one of the additional improvements provided is the trail which sits atop the East Bay Mud Aqueduct right-of-way. Well, that marks the end of today's virtual walking tour. As you may notice, housing comes in a wide variety of shapes, sizes, and densities, each playing a different part in the look, feel, and experience of Lafayette. Please visit planlafayette.org for more information on upcoming events and activities. Click on Elements to learn more about housing in Lafayette. Click on the Get Involved tab to tell us your thoughts and sign up for e-notifications of public meetings. Hopefully, you get an opportunity to get out, grab the physical guide, and follow along. Thanks for joining the conversation as we continue to update the general plan together. We're doing a video for... Yeah, you're doing great. <laughs> love, love the end. That was terrific. All really right. Good. Thanks. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, we'll, we'll make a few tweaks, um, the video and the physical guide. Uh, hopefully we'll be up soon. All right, thank you, Jonathan. So as we are closing out the, um, is everyone seeing, am I sharing the wrong screen? <laughs> you had it. Okay. Was Jonathan the photographer? Yes. Yes. Good job. Everyone's seeing this job. Slide, right? I don't know why that's, sorry. Hope I'm not making you motion sick. And Sarah looked like she was on an exercise program. <laughs> okay. All right, so everyone can see the lessons learned slide? Yes. Okay, thank you. So uh, as we're closing out the community engagement portion of the housing element update process, we wanted to try and draw out some, some key takeaways uh, to bring with us forward as we go into public input. So as we discussed briefly earlier, we found them really effective ways of getting uh, the word out to folks was mailings and city communications. So the social media pages, the weekly roundup. So we will continue, staff will continue to use those. Um, we. Um, we'll, we'll promote everything we can there. Uh, one other takeaway that staff came away with is to go where the people are. So um, we would like to do more. Uh, we understand there's a lot of activity on Nextdoor on this in particular. So we're gonna try and uh, create more uh, information and outreach on Nextdoor in particular, as well as um, using word of mouth more effectively. So if anyone has any ideas on how we might do that, we appreciate the help. Uh, we, we also find it's really important to for the ease of following the process and also staying up to date, uh, having all the information that everyone else has. We're trying to maintain information online as up to date as possible. So no matter where folks come in at the process, they can understand what has happened and, and where we're going. Um, so staff will continue to make that a priority. And um, We've also come away with the, the understanding that community members are very engaged and very eager to start the conversation. So it's uh, we've we've built up awareness on the this process that's under uh, underway, and folks are raring to to start the conversation. And with that in mind, we'd like to pivot into our public input phase. So this this is where uh, your role as the GPAC. Um, you will be starting to draw out that information from folks to, to inform the recommendations that you'll be creating for the housing element. So as we discussed earlier, this is a, a community driven process, uh, but ultimately you all are responsible for putting the words to the page, the ideas together to try and find those commonalities and uh, to make this thing happen. <laughs> so um, the first means the first announcement within the public input phase is our community workshops. So we will be having four community workshops uh, over four weeks, uh, beginning in late April. And um, the, this infographic will be posted widely and everywhere. So please don't feel the need to scratch this all down quickly because um, I'm going to move to the next slide. 
to kind of depict the, 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 the intention behind these workshops. So we wanna go from the very broad uh, common values around housing to then drill down through each session to become more and more specific. So we're, we're trying to start the conversation, have folks, um, have folks humanize the topic, you know, housing and statistics around and legislation around it can make us uh, lose track of the fact that this is, you know, people's homes, people's lives that we're working with. And so we want to focus that and center that to then build a base to make decisions later on in this process. So uh, then we'll drill down to the second, the second uh, workshop where we'll be talking about the problem statement. So kind of creating the scope in which uh, Lafayette residents, community members feel that the, there are the opportunities and challenges within the city. And then we'll go down further and talk about density and upzoning and how they relate to the CEQA scenarios. And then finally, we'll go site specific to the opportunity sites. So how are we gonna do this? Um, so <laughs> like I mentioned, we'll be going into more specific topics and one means by which we hope to facilitate, we plan to facilitate this is through a platform called Remo. Please don't panic at another technology platform. <laughs> we promise this one is well worth the uh, learning curve. So the reason we are looking to use Remo for these sessions is that's a bit more flexible. It's more like a conference format wherein folks can uh, move tables and we can shuffle folks around. There's a whiteboard functionality. So there's a lot of different ways to um, interact instead of just one person talking at a time on a video. Um, so, and we plan to have a dry run on the platform ahead of the first session for both GPAC members and the public to kind of explore it, get comfortable with it, to make sure everyone um, can participate when the day comes for the workshop instead of spending most of the time figuring out how it works. Um, and one other thing that we'll highlight with the workshops is we'll be implementing a, a tool both in the workshops and through Engagement HQ um, called Balancing Act, which we will be using to uh, get feedback from the community on, on how to balance density throughout different parts of uh, the city to meet our arena uh, allocation, to be able to accommodate our arena allocation. So with that in mind, as we're going to the public input phase, we wanna, you know, get, we've thought about it, but we also know that you all have thought about it. So we want to get an understanding of what our GPEC members takeaways from that community engagement process that we can bring forward into the public input phase. Uh, I'm sorry, the informational phase into the public input phase. Um, so first we want to know what other key takeaways you all might have gotten thus far that we did not cover. And also uh, with a particular eye to engagement HQ and the low registration rate um, that may in the future hamper the amount of feedback and input we get from members of the public to then inform your recommendations. So we wanted to put forward the question of whether or not we should loosen some of the registration requirements on activities to uh, enhance public participation. And with that, we are available for any questions. Renata, um, question for you. The, the participation you've gotten so far on the housing 101s, I was just doing the math and it's a little bit less than 2% of the city population. Is that considered good uh, in your experience from doing this in the past? I will look to Sarah since she has been with this city for a longer time, but I will also just put an asterisk on the numbers from Housing Element 101 that there were multiple folks who attended multiple sessions. Um, so small number, but um, Sarah, any any insights? Uh, so we haven't. I haven't done this in my time time frame here um, since it is a twenty year plan. <laughs> I haven't been there here that long, <laughs> um, but. Something that I am excited about is that uh, I don't think that I've seen as many folks attend as many public meetings. Um, so the online platform has been 
has been a great addition, I think. Um, so, but I, to answer your question, Matt, I don't know, <laughs> but we can look to see like statistically what makes sense or what uh, other jurisdictions get in terms it, of engagement. It seems like a good number compared to having people attend meetings in person in the past. I, I, I think they've been great. Anyway, okay, thank you. Question hey, maybe uh -huh. yeah, for uh, uh, staff. So we're going to have these workshops to solicit opinions in kind of a structured manner. And then there's the engagement HQ out there also really for ideas and opinions. Ultimately, do we just kind of pull both together to try to get a composite view or one more than the other? Or how, how do you see this ultimately uh, coming together? Yep, it definitely would be um, definitely all of that come to, coming together. The idea would be that each of you would take a role at each of the tables for the for the session, the workshop session. Workshops. So you okay. would be essentially taking notes and making sure that everyone's voice is heard um, and reporting out um, so that we can get a wide variety. Mm -hmm. of books. Okay, but the engagement at HQ will be continuing along in parallel. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. Uh, I'm representing the seniors, and uh, one of the things I would I would love to get this out. I'm just wondering if there what what way I can get uh, uh, the Senior Service Commission to encourage the large membership in the Lafayette Seniors Program to get involved with this. Uh, that's one thing, and then secondly. Uh, one of the things that I've been thinking about from the seniors' point of view is the ADU idea. And I have not seen anything that we have looked at here uh, in regards to the ADUs. Uh, I, I see that as a potential for some of the low-income affordable housing as well as providing senior support and senior alternatives that they might not have otherwise had. Uh, I have talked with Sarah and we've, we've, we've begun to formulate some things, but I haven't seen anything in the materials that we have looked at so far that speak at all to the ADUs. Are we just ignoring that or where, where are we? And then what ideas would you suggest that I carry for seniors on this? Because it, it does, it's, it looks wonderful on the one hand, but I, I, I don't want them to miss the boat completely because they feel uncomfortable with the electronics of it. Those are great points. And, and certainly we would actually look to you to, to help us understand what you think would be the most effective. We do um, have some thoughts around creating sort of paper copies of surveys and things like that, which is obviously very different from a conversation you might have. Um, and unfortunately we would normally do this in person, right? But, and we're really only doing it because of the pandemic. So. Um, Oh, we've all been vaccinated. Well, excellent. Then, then we, we can have a separate session. <laughs> that might be just a very interesting thing to do. Yeah. And, and you could certainly cool it. I mean, you, you, sure, we can talk about that later on. I, that just came to me. But uh, okay. And then, Mayor, did you have something about the ADUs or? Um, yeah, and, and also the other things. Yeah, that's a really interesting idea about the seniors, but to have it actually in person, you might be able to do it. Um, I thought La Marinda Village might be another place to have some more outreach for the seniors, yes. Yes. Um, obviously. And um, the uh, are we reaching out to the homeowners councils for them to spread the word as well? No. I guess. That would be good. And, and when's the mailer coming out? There's going to be a mailer that'll have those little four dates on it, right? So when, when is that coming out? That should be mailed out Friday. Oh, wow. So super great. So that, it'll come out soon. Um, yes, ADUs, you're right. They're not, um, so the way they can count for our arena is that what we'll do as a, as a city for all the ADUs we have so far, we can project that rate into the future and they're typically not coming in at low income, they're coming in at moderate income. And so we'll have to justify with the state that we will be continuing to create these ADUs at the same rate 
which did go up last year and this year. And so we definitely are on an upswing of ADU creation. And, um, and we will be able to use those as towards our arena, but we have to justify them and they'll most likely come in at moderate. So that's, that's how they will fit in. It's not so far a huge number, but it's a number. No, it's a number. No, I, I, uh, it's, a, it's a tough sell. Uh, but I think it, it, it looks to me, I, I have been attending some uh, seminars and, and there are some things that, that come as pre, prefab and, and, and there are all kinds of uh, a spectrum for this, but uh, the, it is a, a, an option. And I see it particularly from the senior point of view as a way of either providing somebody to come into your home so you don't have to go out and you have your caregiver living nearby or with you and, and or a way providing extra income for those people uh, who might have to move on out someplace else. And this gives a little more income for them to move to a $7,000 a month rental. So yeah. um, what I'm hearing is that this is, this is, you know, a, a, a priority that that might be identified through this public input process by members of the of the senior population, right? So right. I think this is the perfect time. This it's not being ignored. It's this is when that conversation is happening, right? And, and if we have a senior table, that would be something to, for them to to be talking about. Yeah, yeah. So I I I, I like what you're talking about here, and I, I'll carry this back. Excellent. And Don, I would just offer too, if you want us to have a separate session that's just for seniors uh, to, to teach how the platform works, we'd be happy to do that. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll carry that back. Yeah. Matt? Yeah, a couple of questions. Renata or Sarah, will there be something that I can electronically forward to all the chamber members to get them involved? Um, is that, when will that be coming out? So all we need to do is set up the, the meeting registration so folks can get it on their calendars and then we'll be sending it out to the full contact list, all the commissions, as well as GPAC. Okay. So shortly. I, I, can, I can forward that to the entire membership of the, of the chamber at that point. Correct. Yes, okay. please do. Yes, yeah. counting on you. <laughs> the other question I have is, and I don't really want to get to it now, is, is the registration, obviously people don't like to register especially at a government website, um, is, is there really any value we get from registration other than demographics? So just unlike the housing element one-on-one sessions, Sarah, correct me if I'm wrong, the registration won't be required for these, okay, but it will be encouraged so we can kind of plan for how many tables to set up and, you know, just kind of people management. Um, so for like a more administrative side. So we'll be open for people to log on if they want. Yeah, I guess I was referring to the Engagement HQ site. I, I apologize. Um, is there, any, is there any, what's the value we get out of the registration? I think it is just sort of knowing where the information is coming from. Yeah. Um, also email address for future emails. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'd be worried about ballot box stuffing. Somebody uh, could just be pumping similar material in. Now we have, we have some of those nearby, I think. <laughs> I think at least the registration puts a damper on that a, a bit. Yeah, I, I wonder, is there, a, is there maybe a reduced amount of information like the email, I, I kind of get that, that one could be valuable, but could we reduce the amount of information they've got to give us? We certainly could. So all of the demographic questions have an option for prefer not to answer. Okay. So no, it's never required that someone give that to oh. us, but there is an explainer at the big at the beginning that this is helpful because it informs, you know, where we might need to be paying more attention for our engagement and, and where certain concerns are coming from within the city. Um, so it's helpful, but none of it's required at this time. Okay. Thank you. But it is kind of, uh, you know, a new password and and username and all of that, which I think people tend not to like. <laughs> right. Right. Namratha? Uh, yeah, going off of that, if I, I get the thing with the password and the username, that's kind of, I feel like that's my big aversion to registering for stuff. Um, so is there a way to collect some of that demographic information, like how we kind of have done in like the mission statement survey? Um, 
in the like in the engagement activities or at least in some of them so you can collect data with some of this uh, demographic stuff as well oh so you mean once you're inside you can start collecting that information yeah like they could voluntarily give it right like in the survey case like you put a couple of demographic questions at the bottom and they can choose to answer that right Actually, I'm doing a COVID um, survey and I was very hesitant to do it. Um, it's like a citizen science survey. And, but a friend of mine who's a doctor said it's really important that, um, uh, that scientists understand the uh, long-term effects of, of COVID vaccine. And what they did in their survey is they asked just a few questions in the very beginning. And then as you gained trust, they asked more specific questions. So, um, so that's a, uh, you know, that's, that's a style that we could possibly uh, look into is just be a uh, uh, minimal amount of, of information being requested. And then as they realize, you know, this is okay, then, uh, then you can ask for more. Anna. Yeah, I'll just add, I think that's an interesting point because since we've been on, I was going to take the housing plan survey from um, HCD. And mm -hmm. at the end, it asks you for, I think it's your name and your email address. So I X'd out personally, I didn't want to provide that. And so I do agree that sometimes it's kind of off putting or it can um, kind of dissuade people from providing input. So Maybe it's, I think it's a good topic to think about other options, mm -hmm. or at least for some of the participation aspects. Mm -hmm. And then I do have a comment, it's a little off topic. And so forgive me, Renata, I know you're not going to like this because I know you said that the mail is coming out Friday, but um, in hearing that a, a large portion of the survey, people taking the survey said that they received the information from the direct mailer and they appreciated the direct mailer. I personally was expecting like a bright colored postcard. And I know the last mailer for the housing element 101 came in a white envelope, which I actually put in my recycle pile without opening until I later realized. So just something to think about maybe for future mailers, if um, some of them, I know when there's a lot of material, it's nice to have the trifold that, you know, you can actually put information on there, but just something to think about for the future on other ones, maybe. Yes, this one is certainly a bright postcard. Okay, cool. Uh, we just wanted to scare people with a city envelope. <laughs> See if that worked. No. Just kidding. <laughs> um. Of course, the, the, the dates that for the in April and May, are those going to be in addition to our regular biweekly GPAC calls? I'm just from a schedule planning standpoint. Correct. Okay, thank you. And ultimately, too, that could be up, up to the group. If you all don't want to meet, uh, have your regular meetings because you have the workshops to attend, that, that could be a, an item for discussion. But we had right. not... Uh, proactively cancel them on your behalf. <laughs> right. I think it gives us a quick chance to respond what, what we heard while it's still fresh. If you wait two weeks, we may forget a few things. Mm -hmm. So are you counting on all of us to manage a table at each of these four meetings? That is a great question. So uh, likely, yes, <laughs> but I think it partially depends on, <laughs> Don says no. <laughs> he didn't realize exactly what he signed up for. <laughs> um, also, I'll just preface it and say, this is, this is probably kind of the most intense um, part of it all, um, but um, as you are available, I think, and we certainly staff will, will bring in, you know, people from Parks and Rec or whoever we need to, to, to help facilitate, um, depending on how many registrants, re registrants we have. These are gonna follow, so the same format by neighborhood for each of the- This is gonna be for, uh, for everyone. So 
everyone will be able to attend any meeting um, and it's kind of by topic, right? So from okay. the broad topics to the more narrow. Okay. Okay, so you're gonna train us in one week. We will train you and you will be very prepared, I promise. <laughs> I just have a lot of conflict. So the, the so evenings are tough, so. Anyway, and if we can't make it, we'll, we'll definitely, I mean, we'll make it work. Someone at the table will be a facilitator. We were just hoping to have um, you all to be participants in the public outreach. Thanks, sir. All right, Mayor Candell. Yeah, so um, uh, Vice Mayor Garinger just brought up a really good point that we could bring in the alternates if we, if that is something okay. that you guys might want to think about as well. That's a great idea. That's a great idea. Yeah. So we'll train them as well. Great. I don't know, I envision it as like a blackjack table. We can have a few hands and then move on to business at hand. <laughs> Just to bring them in. Yeah, right. We'll serve wine. There you go. <laughs> Anybody else have any questions? Could you give that fourth date in May if we're going to be involved? I, I got May 6th, but I didn't get the last one. May 13th. 13? Yes. If you're asking me to give up my life, I need to start reorganizing. <laughs> Just four Thursdays, that's all. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. Two Tuesdays and... <laughs> Okay, uh, if there are no more questions for staff, um, we're gonna open the topic up for public comment. Yes, and then I just would want to circle back at some point about whether or not we wanna do the registration or not. I've, I heard some disparate discussion, um, and so I would like to get some clear direction for staff. Um, okay. But first person uh, on the list is David Clark. David. Okay. Oh, just want to make an announcement that public comment is um, a three minute opportunity to uh, comment. Um, and uh, let's bring David in. I think I'm in. Hi, everybody. Great. Hi, David. Uh, couple, hi, couple things. One, I had a comment about the, the staff report or the uh, reports in the prior agenda item. And, and Matt, there was an election, as you know, 2016. And it sounds like your mission statement is pretty far along, but there was a lot of research that went into um, that the ballot proposition for the sales tax measure in 2016. And I don't know if all that, a lot of that is probably was four years ago. So it may be dated at this point, but um, some of the same topics, protect open space and relieve downtown congestion. That one may not go over as well, <laughs> given what we have to, uh, to do. But anyway, I just toss that out as a possible source because I know there was a lot of, um, of uh, research and focus groups and the results of that were published prior to that, prior to that election, if that's helpful. Okay, thank you, uh, a couple of other things. Sarah, the, when you were walking at 950 Huff, the, it, I heard you say Creeks something easement. I don't know if you remember the script, but do you remember, recall what that middle word was? Because I didn't hear it clearly on the tape. I, I'm, I'm assuming it was trail. But yes, I, I hope that's what I said. <laughs> it, it almost sounded like channel, but I don't know. It was, I mean, I can go back and listen to it again, but I couldn't pick that one word up. And the last thing, this is a question, I suppose, but that a traffic light at the Brant, I'm not envisioning where the traffic light will be because there's a light at that corner. There's a weird corner already because the, the streets don't line up. You know, the street kind of drops off and into the sushi and the taco uh, but is there going to be another light, another light on top of that, right? Where opposite the city offices or something like that, where the garage entrance is? Sorry, yeah. Um, yes. So I believe it is like pretty, pretty close to where the city office uh, mm -hmm. driveway entrance is. Okay. Um, but I'm happy to share the plans for, with you, or you can find them on the website. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. No, that that the tour is wonderful. Thanks. Thanks, David. All right.
So I'm letting in um, someone listed as 1015. Okay. Uh, hi, this is Sharon at uh, 1015 Dyer. My comment is um, in regards to Anna's comment about she really hoped that the mailer would be something that people wouldn't accidentally put into their recycling, like the white uh, envelope from Lafayette that Renata wanted to scare us all with. I uh, really appreciate her trying that, but I also really felt that that went into a lot of recycling bins and did not get open. So just wanted to comment that I'm so glad to hear that the flyer that's coming out Friday is uh, brightly colored. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you. Uh, and then Jeremy Levine. Hello. Oh, looks like I need to rotate that that way. Um, good to see you all. Hi, this has been a fun meeting. Lots of like good reviewing. I uh, love the engagement plan. Two comments, kind of questions. I am curious about what the outreach strategies are that the GPAC is using to reach people who work in Lafayette not just live here, like are, are, is the GPAC or the city staff coordinating with businesses to put flyers within the business? And that's not just for people who work in Lafayette, but if you have flyers in the business, the more people will see them, no matter you know who they are, if they're in Lafayette. Um, so that's an idea slash question, pardon me if I missed it. And then a second idea slash question that, that may have already been discussed is, uh, I hope that Engagement HQ and, and other city forums will have moderation standards um, that are that are pre-specified and clearly um, like everyone has to see them before making a post or something. I think that it's pretty important that we on the city's forum don't allow personal attacks, don't allow blatant misinformation you know there's a gray area about what counts as misinformation but there's black and white on either side i think um yeah just standard moderation questions might be important to answer in advance before um the conversation picks up so those are two suggestions great thank you Did, have these already been discussed Did i miss them or uh, are these newer topics? Good idea. So okay, cool. Go ahead, Sarah. Or Matt. Oh, I was just going to mention um, that we did actually do that. We went door to door for the for um, all of the businesses downtown when we adver advertised for the G Pack itself. Um, so we can certainly do that again for um, for the workshops and offer to place things in businesses and um, and engage with the actual owners and ask their employees to attend as well. Um, Renata, did you have something on the moderation? Yes, so Engagement HQ does have moderation um, in uh, employed. So there's some, uh, it is automated and then it will go to a person for review. And there are standards on Engagement HQ on um, Bing the Tables uh, website. Um, so those are pretty, clear on what they, what will get something flagged. Um, and actually it's already been a little bit overly sensitive uh, in some of the, in some of the comments. So it, it took down a, an idea as well about uh, parks suggestions uh, and it put it back up once they realized it was not uh, defamatory or uh, offensive. Um, so it is, it is working <laughs> in some way. Huh. Yeah. Great, thank you so much. All right, thank you, Always, I'm always impressed by the city's efforts. Thank you. So uh, if there are any other public comments, please use the raise your hand function at the bottom of the screen or press star nine if you're calling in. I don't see any other hands raised at this time. Okay, well, that uh, closes public comments. Um, does anybody on the committee want to bring up uh, any other issues related to the staff's presentation? Any final thoughts? 
Did we want to try to get to a consensus on registration with HQ? Again. Mm -hmm. Sarah and Renata, do you want to talk about that and get it squared away at this meeting? So uh, I'm always a fan of testing things and seeing what happens, um, but um, I, I can understand both sides of the of the coin, which is why why we're asking you all because <laughs> we want to make sure that we're you know doing it in the way that this group thinks is appropriate. Um, I don't know that we, Renata, correct me if I'm wrong, but there are some aspects that are not, you don't have to register in order to participate currently. So for correct. instance, mapping, correct. you can drop a pin no matter who you are. Um, so you don't have to register for that. Um, and I don't know if we've gotten more uh, engagement on those aspects of things versus the other ones. Do you have a sense? I believe we have. Renata, when you were doing the training, this issue of ballot box stuffing, does bang the table, have they seen a lot of that? Or, or is it something that rarely happens? Do you have any sense of that? I'm not certain about other cases where it's happened, but I, um, I can confirm if the, if the moderation would catch that. It's my understanding that it would, but I'm I'm not certain at this time. I think it was it based on the uh, the IP address or some some other characteristic that would identify that it was multiple coming from the same computer. Correct. Yeah. So we can we can uh, look at the IP addresses of responses um, if needed to to gauge if they're coming from a single source. Yeah. I our next meeting is scheduled for the 20th. Uh, that seems like if we have the first one of these meetings on the 22nd, I, I'm just wondering, you know, the, the, the timing here is getting very tight. In terms of being trained and all, all that <laughs> you want of us, uh, I don't necessarily welcome myself or throw myself out to look like an idiot in front of a whole bunch of other people. We certainly will make sure that won't happen, John. You never, you, you would never look like no, that. No, I, I can easily go there. <laughs> you know, um, sir, I can vote for trying to open it up and let's see what happens. Um, it, it doesn't seem to be working with registration, just, I mean, the numbers were so low. It's right. a shame to spend all that money for that software and not get much information. So. Let's give it a try and see what happens. We can always shut it off. Well, that's true. Uh -huh. We've got four four events that we're doing, and we I think to, to quickly review, train before review, right after, so that we see what's working and how to make it better for the other three. Yeah. Another thought is knowing that. Sorry, my dog's squeaking. Another thought is knowing that um, another mailer is coming out Friday. You can see how many people have responded, you know, from the mailer right. and go from there and see if the registration numbers have increased, then, you know, leave it as it is. And if the increase, if the registration isn't really, you know, if it's just nominal, then you can go ahead and maybe drop the registration. Just a thought. I'd like to just clarify, Don. I think you're talking about the workshops, and Matt was talking about the online engagement platform registration. So just want to make sure we're clear. We're still talking about the engagement registration. Okay, thank you. All right, Christine. Um, I would uh, like to continue with the registration. I think it's really important that we keep an eye on how many people are going to attend and, you know, if we can get as much information as we can about people, I think that's great. I just think it's way too easy. Sorry, that was my dog. I think it's just way too easy. Um, sorry. Um, I think it's really important. You know, this is an important topic, these things that we're doing, and I would really like to keep track of who's, who's there, how many people we're planning to have at these events. Um, it helps us keep score. 
um, as far as how many have responded, how many actually show up. And um, I think it's just really important that we continue to have registration. Amaratha? Okay, yeah. Uh, I, I think the registration is important at the event, but I think for the online resources, we should um, take it off because we really want to use the platform as, as Matt, Mr. Pease, whichever you prefer. Matt, please. Okay. Can't we just have the same login for all of the platforms and everything? Or do they have, why do we have to re register it for everything? I think so. Is it cross platform? Is that why? Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the event registrations are on Zoom or on Remo or through like the city and like the engagement HQ registration is through engagement HQ. Correct. So Christine, I think we're talking about engagement HQ registration at this moment. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I still just think, think we should register, but on everything. But that's <laughs> how I feel. Question. I think we're... Renata, or one of you said you were going to be mon or monitoring the um, next door, and when there's a dialogue there pertaining to what we're doing to uh, indicate that the um, uh, engagement is available and that might be a proper location for this sort of dialogue, is there going to be an intent to kind of maybe move the conversation over? I think that that could help there. A lot of the people that are noisy on next door if you can get them shifted over to the engagement, I think that's really what, what kind of what we're trying to do here. That's the intention is to promote awareness that this is a this is a platform that will be used by GPAC to inform recommendations um, and also just bring as many folks as possible into the fold so we're all in the same room. Okay. I mean, basically. with that effort, what Anna just said about a pending communication, I, my view would be let's stay with the registration and see if it starts to take hold more. I mean, it's not, we still got plenty of time for the engagement to play out and see if it starts to pick up from here because there's greater awareness. My, my two cents. When do you um, anticipate being on next door? I just want to clarify, we're not, we're not monitoring next door. We're not going right. to, we're not going to yeah. in that way. We're just going to say, Hey, here's a, here's an opportunity to tell us what you think here. Right. right. Um, and, and we've already reached out to Jeff Heyman and he is, uh, is working on that. So should be, should be coming to a next door next soon near you soon. <laughs> okay. So it, what I'm getting at is trying to bridge to, because I agree with you that I, I like to test things, but we also, uh, right now, Engagement HQ is only the result of the neighborhood meetings. So that was, that was a start. Now people know it's out there. If we continue to require um, registration and we have two really big things that happen, one is the mailer and two is next door, Will the, will the numbers increase just because more people are going there? And if they don't, then we'll know that maybe registration has something to do with people's desire to not, you know, be on it if they have to go through a lot of trouble. Okay, so what I'm, well, I don't know if someone wants to make a motion, but right now what I'm hearing in summary is that we would like to kind of keep it status quo for now, see what happens based on the upcoming outreach efforts. And if that doesn't increase the amount of registration, then we might test it the other way and re remove the registration. Is that what I'm hearing? Yes. Okay. Any decisions? Would somebody like to make it? So like I have a quick it? I have a quick question for you, Sarah. Are we limited to the limited, is there a limited amount, number of people who can participate in these meetings? In the, the workshops? In the workshops, yes. 200. So 200 limits. So registration would allow us to make sure that more people had an opportunity to participate. Then if we opened it up to the general public um, and the same people attend, the same people participated every time. I'd like to be able to spread it out to as many people as possible. Sarah, I think we're, we're getting things mixed up here. Yep, yep. Oh, sorry. 
the registration for the workshops is going to be done through another tool, not. I understand that. Okay. So we're, all we're talking about is the registration just on HQ engagement. Is that correct? Right. Yes. Okay. For right now. Okay. And I just, I don't know. I, I think we, we ought to open it up, but you know, certainly I'll defer to the, the majority there. Um, because it just doesn't seem to be working right now. I would open up HQ engagement as well. Right. Just yeah, that's what we're talking. What I was talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So with some like, should we take a vote? Sure. Okay. Who would like to make a motion? Uh, okay, I will. I, I move uh, to extend the uh, current setup for Engagement HQ where the potential user is required to register until such time as we've had a chance to review um, uh, changes in uh, registration up or down based on future uh, outreach events. And we'll review at the next meeting. How about that? I'll second. Okay, all in favor? Should we take a roll call? Yes. Okay. Uh, Namratha? Um, if I'm not in favor of it, what do I say? No. 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 <laughs> okay, no. Uh, Don Jenkins? Yes. Uh, Dick Craig? Yes. Matt Pease? No. Beth Needle? No. Oh, sorry. Um, I am <laughs> in favor of opening up registration on HQ. Uh, Tim, Jim Cervantes? Looks like he may have left the meeting. Um, Mike is not here. Susie Kelly? Yes. In favor. Christine Rasmussen? So yes is in favor of keeping the registration, right? Yes. 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 Then yes. And Chris Lee. Yes. Five, two, three, motion passes. And this will be reviewed at our next meeting on April 20th. Excellent, thank you. Okay, I uh, just want a gentle reminder that uh, it's a little after 7.30 and uh, we're striving to keep our meetings to an hour and a half. Um, is there anything else to discuss? Any member wanna bring up a comment on this issue? No? Okay. Well, this meeting is now adjourned. <laughs> Oh, time out. <laughs> one, one quick question. We talked about speaking to our seconds. Yes. And I, I wanted to make sure that what we're talking about for the seconds is the four different dates that we, we I outlined in April 22nd going into May. Is that yes. correct? Okay. Yes. We'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and send out an email as well with some additional information and instructions so that no one is uh, confused. Okay, if you could do that, Sarah, that'd be great. So I could just forward that email on to my second with a personal note to it. Uh, that's just very helpful. I'll just include the um, the um, seconds on the on the email itself. Any reason? I can do that too. Yeah. You you know all that, you know all that information, don't you? Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. All right. Sarah, I can work with you on that on the staffing for for the four meetings. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay. Great. Well, have a good week, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Good meeting. See you in two weeks.